Rink wide Vancouver. Pre game, post game, every game presented by Bodog from Sports Odds to free casino games make a play at Bodog.net. Watton and J Pat here with you once again with another edition of the pre game show as the Canucks welcome in the San Jose Sharks and they're licking their chops when they see San Jose on the schedule. Complete and utter dominance as of late against the Sharks. Against the Sharks, but also against the state of California. And the Canucks had success in SoCal last weekend with the wins in both Los Angeles and Anaheim. And now they get the team from the Bay Area. Canucks are 8-0 and against Ooh. the three California teams this season. Uh, but yes, they have absolutely been dominant against the San Jose Sharks. They've rattled off uh, eight straight victories. That's their longest win streak against any single opponent. And they're going to try to continue that. They're 3-0 and against the Sharks this season, although... Two of the games have required overtime. The Canucks winning them in OT. Kuzmenko and Elias Patterson pulling the trigger on the overtime winners. Let's get to the lineup change. It's presented by Delaney's OK Tire out there on Fraser Highway in Langley. Finally, J-Pat, they get to play with their new toy on the blue line tonight. Yeah, it's like one of those Amazon deliveries. You buy something online and you can't get the, uh, you know, overnight delivery. In fact, it's been a few nights. Uh, Philip Ronick was required two days before the trade deadline. So that was a March 1st trade with the Detroit Red Wings. And here we are towards the end of the month. And finally, it looks like Hironik is going to get the green light to play. Now, the Canucks didn't have a morning skate. And in fact, they had an optional practice yesterday. So figuring out who he's going to play with or whether it's going to be an experiment. Maybe we see him with a couple of different partners as the night goes along, depending on the game state. Whatever the case, it looks like number 17 is going to be out there for the Vancouver Canucks so we can start to gauge what exactly they got for that first rounder and the second rounder that they traded to the Red Wings. One thing we know for sure tonight, the Canucks are going to have to clean up the mistakes. They had a lot of them against Vegas. Yeah, Ethan Bear early with the turnover to Phil Kessel on the first goal. You look at the second goal, the Knights goal, it was Kyle Burrows, and then it was Brock Besser. Thatcher Demko, who has been a fortress since returning from injury, but he allowed a bit of a moldy one against Teddy Bluger there. So self-inflicted wounds that you just can't make against the really good teams. Now, maybe you get away with those against a, a lesser opponent like the San Jose Sharks, but individually and as a team, the Vancouver Canucks are just going to tidy up a little bit and make sure that they're uh, playing a cleaner brand of hockey. Of course, playoffs are out of the picture for the Canucks, playing for pride right now, and for some players, playing for some individual stats, including Elias Pettersson and JT Miller. Yeah, the top guys have been going for a while now. Elias Pettersson on a career-best nine-game point streak, so he's going to try to push that to double digits tonight, so certainly something worth monitoring. And when we talk about individual streaks, you don't see these sorts of streaks grow uh, to big numbers very often, but JT Miller has been in on the last seven goals that the Vancouver Canucks have scored, two in Los Angeles, two more in Arizona, in Anaheim, and then all three of the goals the other night. And of course, he scored one of them on the penalty shot, and then he scored a power play goal as well. So coming off a three-point performance, but the last seven goals the Canucks have scored, JT Miller has had a hand in those. So along with Quinn Hughes, the top end guys uh, absolutely have been driving the bus for the Vancouver Canucks of late. Yeah, it'd be nice, though, if some lesser lights could sort of step up. Yeah, I mean, they're really good teams, and I don't think anybody's going to mistake the Canucks for one of the really good teams. They're not going to the playoffs, and the Sharks certainly aren't going to the playoffs. But you saw Vegas the other night. You saw the Los Angeles Kings recently as well. Those teams, they get their top-end guys producing, but they get support lower in the lineup. They get help from the defense core as well. Phil DiGiuseppe scored the third Canuck goal the other night, so they'll certainly take that kind of contribution. But really, for the most part here, uh, guys lower in the lineup have gone a little bit quiet offensively, so you'd like to see players like Dakota Joshua. You'd like to see uh, Anil Zaman. You'd like to see Vasily Podkolzin or Vitaly Kravtsev. Uh, hey, anybody that plays a little bit lower in the lineup, you'd like to see some contributions from some of them. It can't always be the top-end guys. We've been tracking this number all season long, and the Canucks could reach it tonight with a successful penalty kill. Yeah, you got the bugles ready. We may need some sound effects for the post-game show. The quest to 70%. And look, we've done this uh, tongue-in-cheek that it's a pretty low bar. But we have been tracking it all season because if you remember on opening night in Edmonton, the Oilers went three for four on the power play. So the Canucks penalty kill started the season in this massive hole. And they have been scratching and clawing and trying to dig themselves out of it. And obviously it didn't happen under Bruce Boudreaux. Under Rick Tockett, the penalty killing has been better. This month, it's actually been uh, near elite levels, and so that's allowed them to claw their way back to close to 70%, but that's not a number that they have attained all season long. If they can kill off the first two penalties they take, if they take penalties against the Sharks, two power plays for the San Jose Sharks, if the Canucks can kill those off, they will reach 70% for the first time all season. 
Let's take a look at the San Jose Sharks now, who are I have been idle since Monday, that is, after a 5-4 overtime loss uh, to the Oilers. Overtime hasn't been kind to the Sharks as of recent. Well, neither is regulation time, quite True. frankly. Uh, this is one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League by the standings. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've lost seven straight. They've lost 12 of their last 13. They have one regulation victory in their last 17 hockey Ooh. games. That was a 4 nothing shutout of the Seattle Kraken, so shame on the Kraken, whatever happened that night. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they pushed Edmonton to overtime, but they also got outshot 52-32, and it kind of felt like a matter of time before the Oilers took over. Uh, Oilers did the same thing to Arizona last night, but uh, against San Jose on Monday, uh, yeah, it took a little bit of OT, but ultimately Edmonton got the two points it needed. San Jose gets a single point out of that game, but uh, Sharks are going nowhere in a hurry. They very much are in the Connor Bedard sweepstakes, as a number of these teams are uh, this late in the season. So uh, they're trying hard. They just don't have an awful lot, and we'll see what they look like again, trying to avoid the season sweep at the hands of the Canucks tonight. But they do have a superstar on their blue line, Eric Carlson, having a fantastic season. 22 goals from the defense position which is as many as the Canucks have as a team from their defense all season long, uh, 65 assists. So he and Quinn Hughes both look like they're going to reach 70 assists on the season, 87 points for Eric Carlson. And you think about the team that he plays for right now and the fact that the Sharks don't win many hockey games, and yet he has continued to rack up the points all season. So it's really been incredible. I mean, this is a guy that had an Achilles injury not that long ago, and people kind of thought maybe uh, he was done as an effective play-driving defender and a, a guy that could be a difference maker. I know that ultimately it hasn't led to a lot of victories, but you do have to sit up and take notice of what Eric Carlson has done all season long on defense for the San Jose Sharks. 87 points. It's uh, a pretty mind-boggling number. And joining Carlson on that blue line is a familiar face to Canucks fans. <laughs> Old friend Derek Pouliot <laughs> called up from the Sharks uh, AHL affiliate also in San Jose, the Barracudas. Uh, he's played seven games for them. Uh, this is a guy that's played 220 games in the National Hockey League, 133 of those for the Vancouver Canucks, one of those reclamation projects. Of course, he was a top 10 draft pick in his draft year, but it's never really materialized for him as a couple of assists in the seven games that he has played. Uh, but he's back in the National Hockey League, and uh, you have to salute guys that uh, keep on grinding, even if it takes a little bit of a, a trip to the minors and uh, you know a bit of a detour. Uh, Derek Bouliot's living the dream and playing in the National Hockey League uh, but yes, uh, a bit of a blast from the past that you'll see on the Sharks blue line tonight. Let's get to the stat that stands out. It's presented by Jason Hominick at Jason.Mortgage. Well, the stat that stands out to me is the fact that neither the Sharks nor the Canucks have had much goaltending all season long. Now, the Canucks without Thatcher Demko for that 35-game stretch, and we saw that Spencer Martin and Colin Delia... Uh, gave it their best, but ultimately uh, just weren't up to delivering National Hockey League victories and really National Hockey League quality goaltending. The Sharks have gone through a couple of goaltenders of their own. James Reimer is their main man. He's going to get the start here tonight. But San Jose and Vancouver, with the two worst five-on-five -five save percentages in the National Hockey League. And so, again, it just goes to show that if you're going to have success, if you're going to be a playoff team in the National Hockey League, you have to have goaltending. Now, Thatcher Demko is back, and looks like Thatcher Demko of past years. And the Sharks probably a little nervous seeing Thatcher Demko on the other side. We talked about Canuck domination right off the top. Thatcher Demko lifetime is 7-0 and against the San Jose Sharks. So he's a Southern California guy, but he's had some Northern California domination. But really across the board, the stat that stands out to me is that neither of these teams have got nearly enough saves all season long. And as a result, they're going to be on the outside looking in when the playoffs begin here in a couple of weeks. So the stat that stands out, a presentation of Jason Hominick at Jason.Mortgage. Time now for my Bodog best bet. This one looks like an absolute gimme, but hear me out though. Quinn Hughes and Eric Carlson, both over half an assist at plus 125. Now Quinn Hughes has got six assists over his last six games, and they are both first and second amongst defensemen in terms of assists this year. However, Eric Carlson only has a couple of apples over his last seven games, so maybe a bit of a risk here, but you know Carlson, he's been racking them up this year. I think he's going to bounce back, get an assist tonight. Quinn Hughes, he's money in the bank almost each and every night. Take this one to the bank, plus 125. Love that value. Run to Bodog and place that bet. Yeah, those guys are assist makers. Let's hope that they're money makers for you yeah. on your best bet. All right, the best part of the pregame is now. Who is going to do something in this game? 
Well, I mentioned earlier, it would be nice to see some of the support players of the Vancouver Canucks come through. And one guy I left off because I knew he was going to be my do something candidate tonight is Connor Garland. And it is time uh, again, get stuck in these ruts where he goes just too long without production. Now it's 13 games without a goal. You got to go back to a game in Nashville. It feels like a lifetime ago. He has seven assists in those 13 games. So half a point of game player. On a third line with Nils Amon and Dakota Joshua, they're just not generating an awful lot. But still, this is a $5 million player. This is a guy that has been a 20-goal scorer in the National Hockey League, and he's sitting on a dozen for the season with just 12 games to go. So sort of feels like go time against an opponent like the San Jose Sharks. Connor Garland, 13. That's too long to go without a goal. Let's see if he can end that streak and pop one. Or, hey, maybe I'm getting greedy for him. Maybe get a couple against the San Jose Sharks. Whatever the case, Connor Garland is my do-something candidate tonight. All right. Well, let's see if the Canucks can continue their dominance over the Sharks and get another W. Harpoon the Sharks at Rogers Arena. This has been another edition of the Rinkwide Vancouver Podcast presented by Bodog for Jeff Patterson. I'm Andrew Wadden. Remember, Rinkwide is the show that always scores.